video is for training and education of eye surgeons all around the world. This is a posterior subcapsular cataract. People is uh, mid dilated. There is a chance of people getting small during surgery. You can see the posterior subcapsular opacity, and there is a dense plaque at the center of the uh, opacity and the possibility of a posterior polar cataract cannot be ruled out. Uh, so we have to take all precautions that we take in a posterior polar cataract. Drop. So let us start. This is the main incision. And now we are going to use intracameral phenocaine which contains gelocaine, tropicamide and phenylephrine. And now this is SPMC 2% and I'm applying some HPMC over the cornea for better visibility. A side port about three clock hours away from the main incision. And now capsulorexis with the help of a uterator forceps. So we have got a round rexis. Now hydro delineation. The lens matter is very soft. So we just have to do FACO aspiration. Ultrasonic energy will not be required and if it is required, it will be only 20% or 30% ultrasonic energy for a few seconds. So I go bevel down and start aspirating the lens mass. It's over and now the epinucleus ball chapter this is a ball tipped chopper it can support the posterior capsule much better We'll do a little hydro dissection now because the nucleus has been removed and you now even if a precedent occurs it will not cause any nucleus drop. So do a bit of hydro dissection. Simco. Now use a Simco to pull it toward the, towards the center and then use the FECO handpiece again. We have got the got a gap. So inject some visco here.
and lift the lens mass. Bottle height control. At this time, I am decreasing the bottle height. Kato achi bottle height? Initially, the bottle height was 101 centimeter. Now it is 81 centimeters. The posterior capsule is intact, so it is not a posterior polar cataract. It is a posterior subcapsular cataract. And still, we should take all precautions that should be taken in a posterior polar cataract. We can remove this cortex with by manual. We'll go and lift the anterior leaf and the stability of the anterior chamber will be maintained. And now we can implant and Doppler lens. Right implantation of Corona. Uh, since uh, we are suspecting some weakness in the posterior pole of the capsule, we are not going to do hydro implantation. Better to do with visco support, better to the intraocular lens implantation. And here goes the intraocular lens. This is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal aspheric intraocular lens. And now cleaning of visco. Show that again. Show that light is visible. Again, how is the operation? Now, right now, we need to show my light. So, irrigating and removing most of the visco. Irrigating the capsular bag gently. This patient is young, 43 years old, and the patient will need ear glazer after three months. So, whenever we do surgery of a young patient. We always tell the patient about this necessity of ear glazer after three, four months. And some patients need ear glazer even before that, after even two months. So this is the another cleaning of FISCO. So that light is the The rexis is covering, uh, the anticapsularium is covering the optic all around. So that the size of the rexis is about 5.5 millimeter or 5.25 millimeter. This is moxifloxacin. I close this side port here. The main wound doesn't require Hydration most of the time, let us see. This is the final lavage. Now we form the entire chamber. Then check the integrity of all the wounds. No leakage. So the main wound is closed without hydrodissection. Side coat is also no leakage. The intraocular pressure is nice. And here we conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Cut.